<laughs> Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. And uh, God bless you. Uh, my website is jasonbirdspreacher.com and you can get me on Facebook and Twitter. Now, I want to share two more um, I want to share two more um, talks, one on contradictions of the Bible, but this one is on the glorious Quran. Is this a glorious Quran? Is this the word of God, this book? I want to talk about this book, this book. What, what, what is this book? Is this book the glorious Quran? Okay. So I've got some questions and I've got some thoughts concerning this. So, the question is, how do we know that this book is trustworthy? How do we know that this book is trustworthy? In Bukhari, volume 6, book 61, number 559, it says, narrated by Abdullah, the Prophet said, Why does anyone of the people say, I have forgotten such and such a verse of the Quran? He is fact, he is, is caused to forget. There is, is an acceptance that Muhammad forgot some of the Quran. If the Quran is supposed to be the Word of God, then it would have been preserved. But how can it be preserved even when your own prophet could forget the Quran? You, you argue as Muslims the, the Quran has been passed on orally, but your own prophet couldn't even remember his own Quran. It doesn't give you a lot of confidence, my friends. All right? Some might say, well, the Bible has verses missing, such as um, 1 John 5, 7, where it says these three bear witness. And some will say, well, that's not in the Bible. It's quoted by Tertullian in 200 AD, Cyprian in 25 AD, and uh, Priscillian in 350 AD. It was quoted by the Council of Carthage in 415. And the second Vulgate edition in 800 AD has it in. But more importantly, the Waldensian Bible, it can be traced back to 157 AD. So there is evidence, there is evidence that 1 John 5 7 is in the Bible. So you Muslims need to do. Uh, better textual criticism. You might say, well, well, modern textual critics don't agree with you, Jason. Yeah, but the modern textual critics were influenced by Westcott and Hort. This is a big problem. You need to research Westcott and Hort. You need to research why it's a big problem. Because modern scholarship in textual criticism follow Westcott and Hort. And they were not good at textual criticism because they used a lot of human reasoning rather than thinking things in a more objective way, all right? So that's my counter-argument to those who say that a verse is not in the Bible. Okay. In uh, volume, in, in Bukha, uh, uh, sorry. I can't, I, can't, I can't read my own handwriting there. Narrated by Aisha, Bukhari, Volume 6, Book 61, 556. Narrated by Aisha, the Prophet heard a man recited the Quran in the mosque and said, My Allah bestow his mercy on him, reminded me of such and such a verse, of such and such a surah. Again, the, the Prophet Muhammad, false Prophet Muhammad, could not remember his own Quran. How can the Quran be preserved? if it cannot even be remembered. And if it cannot even be remembered by the main guy himself, it shows you that, that this Quran has not been preserved, it's not been passed on correctly. 
narrated by, I think, Hishan, quote, which is missed, Bukhari, volume 61, number 557, again, it's about Muhammad, could not remember his own Quran. Made to forget, quote, from Hadith, Muslim Hadith, book 4, number 1721, says that God made Muhammad forget by Aisha. How can you say that this Quran has been passed on when your own false prophet couldn't even remember this so-called glorious Quran? Next question, who copied the Quran? Who copied the Quran? When the Quran was given so-called to Muhammad, he asked, he got people to copy it. Who were the copiers? Who were the copiers? Who copied the copies on the bones? Who copied the copies on the skins? Did they have authority by God, by Muhammad, to make a compilation of the Quran? If this Quran is the Word of God, where are the textual critics today to prove that it is the Word of God? The Bible has textual critics, even scholars who don't believe the Bible, like Mark Ehrman. The Bible has been under textual scrutiny for hundreds of years, and we have many textual scholars today, believers and non-believers, who do textual criticism. So we can check the text of the Bible, whether it has changed or not. But who are the scholars, who are the Bart Ehrmans of the academic world in in uh, the Muslim world concerning textual criticism. In the, in the Cambridge Companion to the Quran, the scholars admit there has never been a textual edition of the Quran ever made. We don't, they don't do textual criticism. So you can never say that this book has changed or not changed because there's never been an official edition, a textual edition of the Quran. That's deceit because that's stopping people from doing scholarship. And it's also an empty claim to say that this Quran has been preserved. Who are the Bart Ehrmans of the academic world in the Muslim world? There aren't any. Why? Because if they criticize the Quran textually, they are killed. If they criticize the Quran textually, they, have to, they will lose their job. So this book is an empty claim. It has not been passed on. Here's another question. Are the hearers of Islam inspired those who first heard the Quran? Were they inspired? They were human beings. And human beings can make errors. So when they heard this Quran and wrote it down for Muhammad, they were only human beings and they could make mistakes. So it's impossible that this has been passed on uh, perfectly in one manuscript because those people were not inspired and they can make mistakes. Do we have any hadiths that talk about um, Muhammad checked what his companions wrote down of the Quran? Do we have any hadiths? What are the nature of these hadiths? Because uh, there is a problem with this. When the Quran was so called given to Muhammad, and then the companions wrote it down on sticks and stones and bones. And then, how did they, how were they checked for accuracy? Because Muhammad could not read and write. So who checked whether what they wrote was correct? It was not somebody, in quotes, inspired. There's a problem there. Next question, Uthman made a companion of the Quran. Was he inspired? Also, Uthman was assassinated. Why was there a political agenda in making the Quran? 
there's clearly a political agenda because there was a, a caliph, a cali sorry, a caliphate run by Uthman who was involved in a suppressive rebellion and who was involved in making a Quran and getting rid of any other interpretations of the Quran or text of the Quran. This is pure politics. How do we know that this book has been preserved if it was so involved in political manipulation? This text has been manipulated politically. It's not the word of God. This Quran was supposedly given to the companions who wrote it on bones. The very first Quran was written so-called on bones and skins and sticks. Where are the bones? We don't have any evidence of the bones. This is not the word of God. It is empty. It is vacuous. It has not been preserved. We do not have one bone to prove that that was passed on. Why did, why did Uthman have the manuscripts burnt? In Bukhari, it talks about, you can check this yourself, that he burnt the Qurans. He burnt the Qurans. He, he, there was arguments about interpretation and reading of the Quran, a, a, a pronunciation of the Quran. He made one Quran and burnt the rest. Why did he do that? That is hiding the evidence. That is political manipulation. Why did he burn the Quran? And is it... A holy thing to burn the Quran as a Muslim. If it's not a holy thing to burn the Quran, why did and why do you support Uthman who made a Quran and then burnt it, burnt the other Qurans? When he burnt the Qurans, were there variants in those Qurans? How are we going to know if he burnt them? Coming back to Muhammad's memory. In the Quran, in Surah 87, verse 6, Muhammad is said to have a good memory. But then God can make him forget. That is a contradiction. Let's go to it. Quran 87, Surah 87. This is very, very embarrassing. Surah 87 verse 6 O oh, Prophet, we shall make you recite the Quran so that you will not forget any of it. So you'll not forget any of it. Except whatever God wills. You won't forget any of it, but you will forget some of it. It's a contradiction. This is not the word of God if there are contradictions in it. You can read Surah 33, Surah 53, verse 2 to 19, and Surah 54, verse 22, as possible readings. In Surah 80, verse 11, 16, it says the Quran was revealed on leaves. Where are the leaves? In Surah 85, 21, 22, the Surah, the Surah, the Quran was revealed on tablet. Where's the tablet? Is it in heaven or is it on the earth? Where is it? Does anybody know? I don't, I don't know where it is. It's obviously not the word of God because we don't have the tablet. Narrated by one companion, I asked Anas ibn Malik who collected the Quran at the time of the prophet. He replied, four of whom from the and so obey Ibn Kab, Mullah Ibn Jabal, Zayed Ibn Thabit, and Abu Zayed. That's in Bukhari. Mm. So, there were these four companions, these companions who were involved in in this were they all in agreement 
in what was being done at the time. Were all the companions in agreement of the Quran being written down when Uthman made a, con a, a recension? Were all the companions, every single one of them, and the main readers, the main reciters, were they all in agreement with Uthman's recension? The answer is no. So this cannot be the word of God. If all of the companions were not in agreement about the production of Uthman's text. In Bukhari, Muhammad said, I am only a human and I forget just as you do. Again, he forgets. Next question. It says in here about the Injil. Was the Injil a book or not a book? If you studied the Quran, the Injil was a book. The Injil was supposedly given to Jesus. And it was a book. Here's a question. Why would God give a book to Jesus that could be corrupted? It doesn't make sense. Let's go to Surah 546. Surah 546. Surah 546. Yeah, it, we'll go from verse 44. Surah 544. We have revealed the Torah in which is guidance and light. By it, the prophets who were obedient to us judged the Jews, and so did the rabbis. The priests according to God's book which has been entrusted to their care. Why would God give the Torah as a guidance and light and allow it to be corrupted? Or why would he say to people go and read the Torah because it's a guidance and light and yet at the same time say it's corrupted? It's a contradiction it doesn't make sense. We cause Jesus son of Mary to follow in their footsteps fulfilling what had been revealed before him in the Torah we gave him the gospel. Again, there's a comparison between the Torah and the gospel. So the gospel is a book. Many Muslims deny that, but it is a book. And then he goes, who was revealed before in the Torah, a guide and an, and an ammunition to the God-fearing. Therefore, let those who follow the gospel judge according to what God has revealed it. How can they judge if they don't have the book? So if you're saying that the Injil is not a book. You're going against the Quran. It says it is a book. If you're saying that the Torah is a guidance and a light and the Injil, and it's saying here that the Injil and Torah are to be checked to see if the Quran is true, then the Injil and Torah must be here for today. There's so many contradictions with the Islamic scripture and traditions, full of contradictions. Surah 7157. In Surah 346, there's a story about the infancy of Jesus, and that is bor borrowed by an, another infancy gospel. In other words, the Quran has used, has forged material from other sources. In other words, there are these Gnostic gospels and the Quran has borrowed from them stories that we know that are, are, are late editions, uh, are, are, are forgeries the Quran has used. That's in Surah 3, 46, 50, and 10. So it cannot be the Word of God if it's borrowed from false documents. If you read Surah 625, Surah 25, 5, Surah 46, 11, 12, it says that Muhammad was accused of reciting fables. There were people in his time who knew that he was borrowing from these false gospels, and, he, and the Quran tries to counteract that. So, unwittingly, the Quran is admitting that it was borrowing from false material. 
There's contradiction within the Quran. It says in Surah 42.11 that if we go to it, Surah 42.11 Surah 42.11 It says Creator of the heavens and the earth he has made spouses for you among yourselves. Nothing can be compared with him, it says. Nothing can be compared with him. Islamic teaching, theology says that God is nothing like us. And that they get it from that verse, Surah 42, 11. That verse contradicts itself. If God is nothing like us, then why have we got the Quran? Because the Quran is communication. Communication is like us. We are. We communicate. Therefore, if God has given us the Quran, God communicates, so we are like God. But it says in the Quran, God is nothing like anything else. He's not like human beings. He's not like creation. He's different. But there's a contradiction. The Quran is a communication, which implies that God is communication, which implies we can understand the communication. Which means God is like us, he communicates. There's a contradiction within the system. He is like us, he communicates as we communicate. Maybe in a different way, but he communicates. There is a contradiction within that theology and within the text here. We turn to uh, Matthew 13.31. Matthew 13.31 Matthew 13.31 Another parable put forth unto saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man looked to sow in a field, which indeed is least of all the seed, but when it's sown, I think, 13, yeah, 13, Sorry about this. No, we'll go to another verse. Sorry about that. Uh, Matthew 24, 35. 24, 35. Sorry about this. Now oh, these are different. Yeah, so the Muslims, the Muslims say, well, the Bible it's changed, and the Bible's not the word of God. And they'll go to verses like Matthew 24, 35. And heaven, yeah. Sorry about this. Sorry, sorry. Oh, I'm just a bit tired. You go to Matthew 24, 35. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So Jesus is claiming that his word will not pass away, and yet Muslims are saying, that his word passes away, it's been corrupted. So they're going against Jesus' words. But if you go further down, it talks about Jesus doesn't know the, the hour when the Lord's coming back. One way of understanding this is that Jesus humbled himself and he was man, God and man. And how is God and man nature work together is a mystery. But he was two natures in one. And I've covered this in different angles. But one angle you can cover it is that he humbled himself. And as a man, he didn't fully know the hour because it was the father's prerogative to announce when he was coming back. But it doesn't mean to say that God, the son, didn't know. But he humbled himself and submitted to the father who is the one to announce him when he's announced the end of time when, it, when the Lord is to come back. Um, that is one way of looking at it. He's, Jesus is God, but he was a man. And as a man, he humbled himself. And as a man, he, he was only revealed that which he needed to know for uh, doing his task on earth. But it doesn't mean to say the son did not know. It just means in his submission as a man, the man is submitting to the father. All right? It's a mystery. It's beyond us. But 
when Muslims try to corner Christians like with questions like that, well, Jesus didn't know the hour when the Father, when the end of time was coming. You know, we have answers to that. Philippians chapter two answers that question, and then there are other ways to answer that question, but that's just one way of looking at it. But the main part thing there is that Matthew twenty four thirty five. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. The preservation of the Bible, Philo of Alexandra said, the Jews would die 10,000 times rather than permit one single word to be altered of the scripture. That's Philo, uh, a Jewish philosopher in the first century said about the Old Testament. That's the preservation of the Old Testament. So Frederick Kenyon said, the Greek manuscripts, who, who, who was an expert in Greek manuscripts, says the Christian can take the whole Bible in his hand and say without fear or hesitation that he holds it as the true word of God faithfully handed down from generation to generation. That was an expert in man, ancient manuscripts. So the Bible has been preserved. The Quran has not been preserved. Prophet Muhammad, false prophet Muhammad forgot the text. Not only that, there are contradictions within this text. It cannot be the word of God. Also, there are contradictions concerning Noah in Surah 21, 76, Surah 11, 42, 43, and Surah 37, verse 7. We find that it says that Noah's family will be preserved, but one of his sons died. The Muslims try to get out of it and say it, it, the, the son that died was, a, was not his proper son. That's just, a, 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 that's, that's just trying to wiggle out of a clear contradiction in the Quran. Then we have the problem of Surah 33, 37. Surah 33, 37. We'll read it. Surah 33, 37. Surah 33, 37. You said to the man who had been favoured by God, by you, keep your wife to yourself and have fear of God. You sought to hide in your heart what God wished to reveal, and you were afraid of people where it would have been more proper to fear God. When Zayah divorced his wife, we gave her to you in marriage so that there should be no restriction on believers marrying the spouses of their adopted sons when they have divorced them. So basically, the tradition is. In, from Surah 33, 37. Said, Muhammad's adopted son. Muhammad saw his adopted son's wife and, and lusted after her. This is in the Hadith tradition. He lusted after her. So he divorced her so his adopted, his father could Muhammad could could have her as a wife. So then Muhammad conjures up this verse out of his own head so that he, he could justify having his adopted son's wife. And through that, adoption was stopped just to suit Muhammad's lust. Matthew 5, 27, 28 says we shouldn't look at another woman Sexually, Muhammad did that. Math Malachi 2, 13, 16 says God hates divorce. You shouldn't divorce willy-nilly, just at the drop of a hat. Muhammad encouraged divorce so that he could have the woman. And you got this so-called prophet who has adopted a son and now disowns him. So what kind of a, what, what, what's that all about? In Surah 1094, people had doubts about the Quran. And why shouldn't they? Then you have the doctrine of abrogation. 
Sura 16, 101. Sura 16, 101. Sura 16, 101. Surah 16, 101. When we substitute one revelation to another, and God knows best what he reveals, they say, you are but a fabricator. Indeed, most of them have no knowledge. I think they do have knowledge, Muhammad. The knowledge is that you're just concocting this to suit, to suit you. you see, it says here, God abrogates. In other words, one week God gives a verse, says, don't do this. Next week, God changes his mind and says, do do this. And God's changing his mind every five minutes. It won't be so bad, but we're not talking about changing your mind on a, a situation. Like say, right, go this way, Muhammad. No, don't go down that path, but now go down that path. No, we, it's, worse, it's a million times worse than that. We're talking about things that God says, you must do this. Because it's the right way to live. But hey, I've changed my mind. It's not the right way to live now. You must do it this way. That is quite clear, plainly not the word of God. And you have takir. You have a doctrine of lying in Islam. So how do we know you're telling the truth about the Quran if you're living a principle where you can lie? Anything you're saying about this Quran could be a lie if you have a doctrine that you can lie as Muslims. Psalm 119, 78 says the word of God is pure. The Bible is pure. Let, let's read it. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 78. Let the proud be ashamed, for they dealt perversely with me without a cause, but I will meditate on thy precepts. Is it? 11978. 11978. I think I've written down the wrong verse, but where we go? Yeah. Verse on Psalm 119, verse 9. Where shall a man cleanse his way by taking heed to, unto, to according to thy word? I will delight myself in thy statues, I will not forget thy word. You read Psalm 119, it's about the purity and the wonder of the word of God. In the Bible, we see many historical things. It teaches about the Jewish Sabbath, shows the traditions in the Gospels of the rabbis, it shows the arguments, it shows their exclusiveness, it shows the Sadducees. It shows you all the culture of Judaism at the time of Jesus. The Quran has no historical detail about the time of Jesus. So this book is not the word of God, it is not historical accurate. The Bible is accurate in its detail. The Quran misunderstands the Trinity in Surah 5, 1 7 says that the Trinity is Father, Son <coughs> and Mother Mary. It misunderstands what the Trinity is about. <coughs> within the first second, within two centuries, 200 years of the New Testament being written, <coughs> we have 43, we have 12 early manuscripts, we have 40%, 43% of the New Testament within the first first century <coughs> first 200 years <coughs> which from a historical point of view 
is an amazing feat when it comes to ancient literature. If you look at the revelations that Muhammad had by Angel Gabriel, he was pressed, he was like choking, <clears throat> he even wanted to commit suicide. It shows that he was a man who had mental illness and was not a prophet. So he could not have had this revealed to him as the word of God. Muslims use Bruce Metzer to say that the Bible's changed. Bruce Metzer never believed that. So, the glorious Quran? No, I would say the unglorious Quran. I would say that this book is not the Word of God, it's repetitive. It lacks any historical detail, it's full of contradictions, it's textual veracity, the history of the text cannot be verified, uh, there's takia where people are allowed to lie about it, uh, it's political, Uthman um, was more like a gangster and, he, and in the end he died like a gangster, he was uh, assassinated and he was the guy who produced this Quran. His companions never had any authority from God to make the Quran, copy the Quran, um, etc. Uh, there's no evidence of the early history of the Quran, with the bones and all the rest that's been written on it, so-called written on bones. We don't have any bones or early skins of the Quran. These were, are gone. And it was political. Scholars can't do critical research on the Quran. They lose their life. They get fat was put on them or they lose their jobs. It's basically their own prophet couldn't even remember the Quran and he was using, he was making up verses in order to suit his sexual lusts saying that he, he doesn't have to, he, there's no such thing as adoption anymore so that he could just simply marry his adopted son's wife. This is just a pack of lies folks, it's not the word of God. This is the word of God. This is the pure word of God. This is the holy book of God. And this book that lies actually bears witness to this book. This book does not depend on any other authority. It, de it depends on itself. It says, look at me. Read me. I am the word of God. I am the ultimate authority. This book says, if you don't believe me, read this book. I'm not the ultimate authority. This book is. That's what this book says. And then it contradicts itself by saying this has been corrupted. But then it says, to prove that we're true, read this. You can find from here, it says, you can find Muhammad in here. But then it says, the Bible is corrupt. So it says, you can find Muhammad in here, and then the Bible's corrupt. It's contradictory. It says the Torah is light and, and, and Injil is light, but it's being corrupted. This is full of contradictions. It says the Torah is light, but the Torah has been corrupted. The Injil is to be read, but it's been corrupted. The Injil will have the Messiah in it, uh, will have Muhammad in it, but it's been corrupted. All this is lies, contradictions. Then we have this made by Uthman who burnt the text. That should be all what I've shared with you as Muslims. I'm not doing that with this of hate. I want the truth. If this is the truth, I'm coming to mosque. If you can show me this is the truth, I'll come to mosque. I'll abandon Christianity and I'll come to mosque. But it's not the truth, it's lies. You're being blinded by your Muslim scholars. They don't even do a, a textual edition of the Quran. So, if it's true, they would do that. They're lying to you. 
They're lying to you. You're being lied to. A prophet, so-called prophet, making people, uh, marrying his adopted son's wife. How can you even contemplate that this is the truth? A book that borrows from forged books, forged gospels. We know that the gospels that it uses, these infancy gospels, are second, third century. They're not eyewitness material. The forged gospels, and this book uses them as its source. It's not a divine book. I've read many, many books. And I've read this book for over 30, nearly 28 years now. And this book is majestic. It is glorious. It is, it is an absolute divine book. From cover to cover. It is an awesome, magnificent book. This book is... It, it, it's poor. It, 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 it's full of contradictions. It, you can't even read a chapter and it makes sense. It doesn't even make sense in most of the chapters. It's borrowed most of the material from the Bible. Honestly. Muslims, please come to know Jesus. Jesus says you must be born again. You need to be born again. You need to know the Lord. You need new life. A new joy in Jesus. And he offers that for you today. I don't mean to be harsh on you as Muslims or on Islam. I genuinely, with all my heart, with every ounce of sincerity, I believe that this is not the word of God. That comes from a sincere heart. It doesn't come from a desire to put down Islam. It comes with a desire to seek the truth. I genuinely believe this is not the truth. It's not the truth, it's not the word of God, and you've been lied to. I genuinely believe this book, the Bible, is the word of God. I really believe it. It stood the test of time. It stands like a rock in history, and it will guide, gives you the guidance map to heaven. And in its pages is, is Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. This is a book that is has come as a false prophet with false teaching and is a book of error and it will send you to hell because it's not based on truth it's not based on the pure word of God and I say that at, at a philosophical theological investigation not in someone who hates Muslims, I love Muslim people, I love you dearly, I really love you dearly, I really, really do, I do absolutely love you dearly. I would do anything for any Muslim, and I know that most Muslims are lovely people, but Islam is not the truth, and this is not the truth, honestly. And the proof of it, I was in Hyde Park on Sunday, and some of your best scholars were there, your best debaters and I was talking this material in front of them they were there while this material was being presented and they did not come and challenge me they did not come and debate me they'll pick on young Christians and they'll pick arguments with people they can defeat but they won't pick on people who, who have scholarship that can present the scholarship and bring it to them and I was bringing this scholarship to them and they would not debate me. That's a proof to you that what you believe is false. It's false. Because they will just call me a hate preacher. They'll say he's a hate preacher, he's this, that. When they start attacking a person's character, when they won't actually debate you, that's proof that they're hiding something. And they're hiding from you. They're hiding the truth from you. They're not telling you the truth. And they're afraid to debate about the Quran, they're afraid to debate the scholarship that I've just presented to you. Now, I don't claim any originality for this scholarship. I got this scholarship from um, the, the YouTube channel, uh, Urban Theology. If you type in Urban, Urban Theology Islam Debate, Urban Theology Islam Debate in YouTube, you'll find two debates. 
by a guy with a Muslim guy and in those debates I studied those debates, I watched those debates a number of times, made notes and then I went and did some research on my own on the things that were said in those debates and, and did extra research myself to confirm and to add more material but the, the structure, the skeleton of my arguments here are from urban theology, Islam debate okay so they're the source and they get the credit for this video okay let's close in prayer Father I thank you for this uh, opportunity to share what the truth is Lord and I pray that the Muslims who hear this today Father that you bless them and speak to them and minister to them may they know your love and grace and may they come to know you as Lord and Saviour and may Christians be encouraged and blessed uh, from what I've shared today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to just do one more video after this, a short video on Bible contradictions. Um, but I just want to say to Muslims, I, I really, really say this from the bottom of my heart. I don't mean any disrespect. But I've got to be strong. And I've got to say what is in my heart. And it comes from a good heart. It comes from a clear conscience. And it comes from a pure heart of seeking the truth. So when I am criticising this book, it's out of a love for truth. If this is the truth, then you need to show me. Your Muslim debaters had the opportunity to show me that I was wrong. And they could have converted me to Islam. But they refused to debate me. They refused to engage in intellectual debate and scholarship. So if I'm wrong, I'm willing to be shown to be wrong. But in my own studies, in my own research, this is what I've found. So please take it like that. Don't feel I'm, I'm like trying to demonize you as Muslims. No, I love Muslim people. I love you dearly. But truth is truth and error is error. And if something's error, it needs to be exposed. And we, we, we mustn't just play around and play games. If it's error, it needs to be shown as error. If it's the truth, it needs to be shown as truth. And I've shown you that this is error. Alright? God bless you. And have a lovely day. Take care.